Oh, breaking news. Uh, Joe Biden is willing to defend Taiwan if it comes to that. Oh, shit. That just broke. What's up, everybody? I think I spelled Taiwan right. I don't know. Anyway, that's breaking news. What's up, chat? Hit the like button. Obviously, I'm going to sit here and delay for a few seconds, which is the worst when you're watching this on recording later on demand, whatever you call it. Uh, but the live, I don't know if the live alert's gone out to everybody yet. So trying to on get the live. Demand. Did you get it? Yeah, they call it on demand. That's what they call a video when it's. Are you Comcast? Um, that's like a saying from like 15 years ago on Comcast, but it's a saying that people use I've for... I've only ever heard it with Comcast. Well, you don't watch enough internet, YouTube. I don't know. I mean, I do. I don't think you do. You never heard someone say, get it on demand? Only like in reference to Comcast. On Demand, also referred to as Video On Demand VOD, allows the viewer to watch selected movie TV content whenever at his or her scheduled convenience. I mean, I don't need a definition. I know what it is. No. What I'm saying is I've only ever heard it in reference to Comcast. Well, it was it was definitely first ever utilized by Comcast. Yeah. Probably. Like, Video On Demand is something that you really got used to because of they're saying it all the time. But it's still... It's not theirs to own like this you know what's up i uh i got leo with me for a few here by the way so if you guys want um looks like the voting is coming in about what the most interesting wrestling non-wrestling topic is i will do uh i will do everything in this stream you know i'll do wrestling everything else but i do want to hit key points i have uh i have key things to to get in on here um I, I I about know nothing what's been happening with the uh, Johnny Depp heard thing because I don't care. I think we did our funniest bit on it two years ago almost now when, when me and JB and uh, D Moon just trashed the two of them in that eight, 18 minute clip from Corrupted. So I haven't cared too much. I think that she's crazy. I think they're both have problems, no doubt about it. But I have no idea what the update with the trial is. So Leah will tell me that in, in a few minutes. Stranger Things is coming out. Well, I want to talk about what people are, are excited about or not excited about with that. MSNBC uh, disinfo, uh, hilarious video that's out mocking the woman that uh, runs MSNBC. Obviously, given her job because she used to lie for George Bush and everybody. Um, and Dick Cheney, and it's funny that those that the person that used to lie for the Republicans is now the head host of of a show for the left wing stuff. So the just the lies and craziness of that. And so there's a video today on it, so you can finally watch how deceptive and sick those people are. Dave Chappelle, uh, his attacker. There's an update on that. Uh, the guy has attacked. The guy has um, stabbed his roommate in the past. So the guy that uh, Dave Chappelle attacker stabbed his roommate and it was able that to was actually I think that was actually more recent, wasn't it? Oh, no, he stabbed him in the past, but he was able to ID him. Yeah, he ID him because of the news, yeah. because of this story on the guy. It's weird because I thought they were roommates. Well, that's what everybody said. Like, how did you not know, like mm -hmm. your roommate stabbed? Like, so maybe it's the guy. Yeah, looking... It's a little weird. Either way, the guy is mentally ill based on his comments. I've heard his comments, read his comments. He's mentally ill. Uh, another mentally ill person said that, and see, that's why I disregard everything mentally ill. You kind of have to be. Yeah, you do. Well, mentally Ill to try and stab some or to stab somebody, well, you know, like to to commit that act, because most rational people would be like, "That's a terrible idea." Right. Well, that well, see, that's my point. In you know, when people try to associate anybody crazy with e what any political side or person or background or whatever, that's why none of it matters, because. Mentally ill people do all this stuff. Like, for instance, the 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 view people, the left wing view said, "Well, this. that's not a fair statement." What? Well, just let me give because you because there's a lot of mentally ill people that don't do this stuff. Well, no, I I no, you're right. But I mean, when somebody mentally ill does something extreme, what happens is whatever side 
whatever. They try to make paint the, oh, this is one of those people. And so my point is that like, so the view tried to say this guy was a Trump supporter who, it, and it's Trump's fault that this stuff happens. So they tried to do double up to two different things that this is why this stuff happens because of Trump. And this guy was actually a Trump guy when actually what it is, is the guy's mentally ill. So he actually made a song about it. Exactly. He was both because he's mentally ill. So he made a song about Trump, but he also charged the stage in his own words because Dave Chappelle's jokes about the LGBTQ. So the right now is going to say that, you know, LGBTQ are violent and that they can't take a joke. And the left is saying that this guy was really a Trump supporter when in reality, do you know what it is? He's crazy. That's why he supports all the things, because he doesn't know, because he's crazy. This is why the, the shaman guy showed up to Antifa rallies and showed up to the White House January 6th, or whatever, not the White House, the Capitol, because these people just cling to... So we're jumping right into this right now? No, no, no. I just... Well, no, I don't... I don't... I want to wait for the poll, but let's go to the... We'll go back to the Amber Heard thing, but my point is, mentally ill people, unfortunately, are, are everywhere, but they're also being utilized by every side. It's not political. It's the guy's insane. That's and unfortunately, it makes every party of every group point at the other that you're the bad guys. When really, if you just follow this guy, it makes no sense. Why would a guy who likes Trump also defend the LGBTQ and then also charge the stage to stab somebody over a joke? And oh, oh, he also tried to stab his roommate a few months ago. So, oh, could it be that he's just insane? Yes. That's what it is. He's insane. He's not a Trump. What he's being tested for now? I I don't know. I maybe maybe that's why they didn't want to. But you know, again, I mean, the, unless you have a clinical diagnosis, you can't really say that in court. You know, yeah. so if they want to claim that he has some sort of mental disability or a problem or something like that, then they need a clinical diagnosis, which they're probably working on getting now. Probably. And the DA guy also was like, "Oh, I'm going to be so tough on this," and then he wasn't at all. So he's not right because it's hard to argue with people that are mentally ill when they've gotten that clinical diagnosis. I, it's so um, easy to just when you've gotten that like to claim. Didn't insanity. they say he wasn't fit to stand trial? So didn't that maybe right? That, that's the other thing too. Right. So like so we there need two. Um, there's like two separate things, I believe. So like you can be mentally, um unstable or whatever you can have like other things where it's like you've got this mental disability but still go to trial and other other things where it's like you can't go like you're not really fit for this you know yeah i it's and like, i it's like but you know what if you're not fit to stand trial at this point and and sometimes they do this and these people go right back out into the world if you're not fit to stand trial why are you fit to be in society well i don't think that see that's the thing though is that's it's not going to be like uh it doesn't act as a um you've got problems, you're free to go. No, it ends up being like, you've got problems, now we're going to put you in a place where you can get help for those problems rather than just throwing you into a public jail. You get what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, but... They recognize that there's an issue and then they put them somewhere for those issues rather than giving and handing down a sentence. Um... I guess, or even going to trial to, you know, that's, that's assuming that he gets a guilty verdict. My problem is that he'll be out here doing it again, probably. Like, uh, likely that happens all the time because the mental health system in this country is garbage. You're right. So, and part of it is this... That's a whole other issue. Just real quick, uh, the reason is because we abused mentally ill people for so long back in the day and also abused the idea of mentally ill people. We put so many people who weren't mentally ill in mental institutions back in the day and tortured oh, they people. they to throw women in them. Yeah, so they, they would... love to throw women into and, and by the way, institutions. If you didn't think the oh. way you're supposed to... And guys, think about this. Like, If you didn't think the way you're supposed to, uh, with quotations in the air... Uh, they put you in a mental institution. If you're a woman acting a little too wild, you must be mentally ill, you know, back in the day. So anyway, so that's why nowadays we're so reluctant to put people in mental institutions. So it's the overcompensation. Back in the day, we used to disgustingly put people in mental in mental institutions to experiment on people, essentially, and, or, or just to disregard human life. That, well, that's not why they put them there. They put them there well, there's for other a lot reasons. of reasons. And then it, the the fact that they were there and available for people was abused. 
Because a lot of times people would drop these people off. They actually, if you look at a lot of the old mental asylums, mm -hmm. they have that gigantic curved driveway, you know, in when, you, you know, like you can go in, you gigantic don't have to back curved. up, you can just drive right out. And that was done for a reason. The, a lot of people were dropped off in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. they, they were designed with that in, in mind. And then the families would like literally never come back they would drop them off in the middle of the night pretend that person didn't exist probably tell the neighbors oh they're you know like they went to this place for work or they went to that place you know like because it was a massive embarrassment it would like you know like all these high status families and stuff like mm -hmm. that would they, you don't want to be associated with that so they would drop these people into these asylums and they knew nobody was coming back you know nine times out of ten somebody's not coming back for them and they're not leaving so they can do whatever experiments they want Mm. Well, let's move on from this. I think we all pretty much agree on this. I think that yes, this would be a good point to segue into uh, Amber Turd, who's also maybe she, she's got a mental illness too, but it's a different. Well, today's well, so th it's not done. There's right now they're at lunch. Actually, right, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going another... on in the trial. None of us know, right, chat? Nobody knows what's going on in this trial, really. Probably so. Sure, what's going on today? Um. So. This morning, um, so they're in the defense portion of the trial right now. This should probably be the last week. They may even, the defense, which is Amber Heard's side, may even rest like today. Um, not 100% sure. They will rest they in peace. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna go ahead. <laughs> they might rest today. And then there's like a rebuttal type thing for the prosecution. It sh This should be the last week. And they also only have so much time. And... Um, like each side only gets so many hours and once you've reached that whether you're done presenting your case or not that's it that's all you get um, besides closing arguments which each side gets two hours for closing arguments but that's separate so anyway today's that today they brought up to um well they brought up a hand surgeon and they brought up um he's still actually technically on the stand they're going to do the, um, God, what do they call it? Not the rebuttal, but like, um, they already had cross-examination. Now they're going to have, oh my God, why can't I think of the word? Well, anyway, the, the def it's the defense witness and they already had um, him up there and then the prosecution got to go up and cross-examine him and now they're going to, you know, like the, the defense gets to come back up one more time. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's going to happen and continue after lunch. Wait, so you're telling me that there's going to be a decision soon? Like, that's what I'm kind of getting towards. Like, when is this? So based result? on what I've seen online and what I've seen online, and this is from people that are actual lawyers, because I'm not, and, you know, former defense attorneys, former, um, law attorney, you know, just even people that, um, are like analysts now. There, the the general consensus seems to be that it's going to take a couple of days for this jury to come back with anything once they go to deliberations, which if they go to deliberations on Friday, it's a three-day weekend, so they're not going to be deliberating through there. So likely there's not going to be a verdict until next week, some point, maybe. <clears throat> I mean, it's, I've... I've watched it off and on, mostly like I like watching live testimony because they have depositions, which is like everybody has a deposition, but sometimes for whatever reason, like the person can't fly in, can't be there for a whatever deposition, reason. deposition, Leah? Yeah. Sorry. The deposition. They'll use the person's deposition as their testimony and they'll play that for the, the jury. Um, mm. Where like they've already asked other questions from both sides. They're usually all choppy and cut up or whatever because they only admit so much of the evidence or so much of the testimony, but, um, I didn't watch a lot of those because they're actually like super extremely boring to watch because there's no like real, like anything going on in the courtroom. Like it's just, you're watching a video of just pre-planned questions. There's no, you know, arguments going on, which is like kind of the exciting thing about it. Right. I mean, so like today got really exciting because the second guy that they had up and this is like, it's almost like they brought up like Right, the very first person they, that the defense brought up, that Amber Heard's team brought up, was like a psychologist, psychoanalyst, whatever type person, and 
when they brought Amber Heard on right after that, and this lady sucked. She was clearly, like, super biased against men. Like, even in all of her examples, it was always, she's the victim, he's the aggressor. It was like she never used any sort of generic terminology. It was always, it was very, very clear that this lady was super, super biased. And you, like, I don't know, it just was, like, really not a good look. Um, And now it's like they almost brought, like, this psychoanalyst, like, it's like almost like they brought, like, a second person on. Because when they brought, they brought that lady on, and then they brought Amber on, and Amber actually kind of, like, ruined that lady's testimony with her own (laughs) testimony. Um, and so it's like, almost like they try to bring a third, like a second person on now Mm -hmm. and the cross got up, like, uh, Johnny Depp side got up and just like, this guy like was like really getting angry. He actually had to be admonished by the judge twice to just answer questions. Like this guy was being super snarky, super sarcastic, even though Depp's side was making like really good points because this guy basically got up there today and was like, um, Johnny, he, without saying these exact words, he was implying that Johnny Depp is a narcissist and that's characteristic of this like type B, whatever type personality things, which are often present in people that commit this like interpersonal violence. I think everyone stuff. in Hollywood's a narcissist, so she's a nar- <laughs> they're all narcissists. Well, the thing is though. This is the big deal. So he's like up there implying that Johnny Depp has these narcissistic traits, which by the way, he's never, he's only using is like, that a crime? Um, I would just be like, is that a crime? I mean, like, what? well, the hell? they're trying, they're trying to state that he has this thing without stating it because he's never been diagnosed with it. And this guy has actually never even met Johnny Depp. He's just going based off of reports that he was, uh, you know, that he was given that they've entered in, which is like like very minimal testing. And the guy actually in his deposition called Depp an idiot. Like he called him an idiot. I can't believe that the prosecution, and he's trying to play it off like, well, that's not the whole context. But even when he gave the context, it was like, that still sounds horrible. Why would you call somebody like somebody you've never met and you didn't diagnose and you didn't actually like you could you didn't test why did he call johnny depp an idiot though like why he's an idiot why i don't even remember what it was it was something like super convoluted the way he was trying to like defend that like um like decisions he would make or something like that it was something it was like that like yeah, I have, I'd have to go back and watch it well, again because the guy talk. The guy also talks insanely fast. They he was actually asked to repeat a couple of times because of how fast he was talking. But he was trying to say, basically trying to sit up there and without saying that Johnny Depp is a narcissist, to say that he was diagnosed as a narcissist, and that's one of these traits that falls into this certain category of people that often commit the interpersonal violence, which is what they're calling it for some reason, rather than just domestic violence. I don't know. I guess it maybe it covers more of a broader spectrum of things. Hmm. But the funniest thing about it, though, is that they're trying to say that, even though Johnny Depp has never been diagnosed with that, but Amber Heard has been diagnosed with, like, bipolar disorder and um, another disorder, which also fall into that Category B thing for interpersonal violence. So it's like she falls into that category, not him, because he's <laughs> never been diagnosed. And you're trying to say that he has this and you can't say that because he's never been diagnosed and you've never even met him. And they were also trying to go into his cognitive function. This guy is supposed to be like an expert in cognitive function. And he was trying to say, and again, remember, he's never met him. And they're trying to say that. He has a diminished cognitive function because of drugs and alcohol, which he has never, it's never once been denied that he has a problem or had a problem with drugs and alcohol. That's clear as day. That's way out there. He said it while he was up on the stand. Like, so that's not an argument. But this guy was trying to say that he had a cognitive impairment and that like what they're trying to argue and what they're building up to is that oh he did these things to amber and his cognitive memory is so terrible that he wouldn't even remember doing these things to amber that's what they're trying that's like clearly the direction they're going however this guy based it off of and this the this the defense rebuttal like this the defense cross rather was so good that they get up there and they're like well where did you what do you base what's the baseline for that 
because you need a baseline yeah. of what somebody is is like naturally, what their natural cadence and type, whatever, how they talk. Which, if you watch him up on the stand, he's clearly naturally sort of like a slow, um, processed thinker and speaker. Mm-hmm. You can see that like in interviews and stuff like with him too. That is his natural tone and demeanor in speaking. And so like they tried to bring up like like oh like that's what he what he used as a baseline I guess was like pirates. The guy said in his deposition like literally he used pirates as a baseline and they were like so you used movies. His movies, where he's rehearsed, but Amber and has him acting. recorded talking. Like there's a, or he yeah. he has himself recorded, and she has her him recorded, and like that's yeah, no, the- no, no. The guy didn't use those. He said himself that he used the his movies, and they were like, do you not recognize that they would um they rehearse their lines and and every you know like bringing this up like well how can you use a movie? Why wouldn't you use an as- interview, a, a Hollywood interview, if anything? They said interviews, but this guy in his dep in his deposition, he like on the stand he was saying interviews. I think maybe he's been coached somewhat by Amber's team. Yeah, that's why he was that. probably mad on the stand because everything was going the wrong way for what he was supposed right. to say. And he's but like, oh, I'm not going to get paid now. To. I also think he was lied to though, because another thing he says. So there's like this famous picture of Johnny Depp like sort of passed out on a couch and he's got ice cream in his lap, and that's from brought up in court. Like you seen that picture, right? No. I don't know if you're being sarcastic. No, I really haven't. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I'm telling you, people don't care. I have not paid a lot of attention to this case. That's why I'm like saying like, what happened today? Because I think a lot of us don't, I think some people care, but they just don't care to find out all this information. Yeah. I mean, there's like a million things I could go into, but I figured I'd just cover what happened today. I think most, most people think Amber sucks and that's it. And except for the media, the media thinks Amber is a hero and Johnny's a terrible person, but. Well, let me finish the like the last thing before i, I don't know it. why the media um, likes amber so, heard but i don't know well i don't know well probably because you know, <laughs> she's I, not I, a likable person like i mean there's just so much evidence out there that she was it's not even just like a, oh we love johnny depp and like like you know, fuck that lady well or he's, got pro- he's, got watching... he's got problems he's got problems you know he's got problems but she, right and know. he's never hidden those she's when she's up on the stand talking and when they're addressing things, her testimony, it is literally everybody else is wrong. Even my witnesses are wrong. I'm right. I'm always, it's like you get, you get that, like, that's what she's like. Yeah. It's just everybody is wrong, no matter what. Everybody's a liar. Like, literally everybody that has ever said anything in this, including people that have been her own witnesses, because her sister's testimony with the whole stare thing and then the hitting Johnny thing, th- their testimony didn't even match. Oh, my sister's a liar. Everybody's a liar, but her. Huh. So, I don't know. It's ridiculous. Like, you, when you watch the whole thing through. But the last thing I wanted to say was about the picture or whatever that they talked about today. Um, is that, so there's a picture of Johnny Depp and he's passed out, sitting up, like passed out on a couch. And he's got a thing of ice cream and it's spilt over and it's spilt in the picture. The guy, the witness today thought it was vomit because they were testifying about like medications that would make you pass out. And he was like, "What? Well, it wouldn't make you vomit. And they're like, what? Vomit. Like, this what are you talking dis- about? And he's like, and they were like, we think we, you're referring to the picture with the ice cream. And he's like, oh, well, I was told it was vomit. Who told you that? And it's actually super enraging that the, like, prosecution didn't ask him that. Because it's like, who the hell told you it was vomit? Nobody in this trial once or anywhere has ever said that that picture is vomit. It's ice cream, and everybody knows it's ice cream. So who that like? I don't know. It's just ridiculous. It's yeah. Like it's like did the did the defense tell you that it was vomit to make her seem a lot better? You know, like just to answer a question in the chat. Why is this case matter so much? It's to distract you all from what's really going on. But that's the answer. But it's. But- I mean, I don't normally follow. Like, I like I like law stuff. That's no secret. Um, well, then you should really be into some other things. But I normally follow criminal cases, like um, not defamation cases. I like prefer criminal cases and watching how that stuff plays out. This was just interesting to me because we have been talking about the like the Amber Heard Johnny Depp stuff for a while with like the whole like, her shitting in the bed and stuff. You know, like all of that. The whole, that was like so. It was like watching this. It's like what what the hell else went I, on here? Are you sure it's not just because it's the most popular thing going on everywhere all of a sudden? That you're no. that everybody's interested because 
I don't know. Uh, to me, it's a this is a clear like they love distracting everybody. So this is just like oh, put this I out mean, there. If you want to believe that? I mean, I kind of kind of do. I mean, this whole trial weird. doesn't this trial doesn't consume my whole life. So I don't really know why I wouldn't have time to look at other things. What's what am I being distracted from? Well, do you that I can't. What I, what am I looking so hard at this trial right now you. that I'm not looking at other things? Not you, but I mean, just the whole the whole. It's the distract everybody really. You know but what distract I mean? from what? Do you understand what I'm saying, though? Like, yeah. if I'm watching a trial for a couple of hours a day well, while I get other things done, like, I've got it playing on my phone while well, I'm doing every, other things. If everybody watches... What am I... And it's only, by the way, it's only four days a week. It's not happening on Fridays, and it doesn't happen on Saturdays and Sundays. Well, so if everybody, what is this distracting me from? If everybody focuses on this instead of the crises and things that are actually going on, like, they, then that's good for the people in the... Leadership. So roles. you think because that I'm watching not this, you, not, I'm not, not you. Okay, so you think because other people are watching this, they're not looking at any other news. This is the only news. I think for a lot of people it is. I because, think that's short. Because if you bring this up to most people, they're like, because oh, yes. honestly, oh, my I God, think let's if there's talk. a type of person out there that's going to watch the Johnny Depp trial and not focus on the news, whether or not this trial existed, they mm -hmm. weren't going to look at the news anyway. That's probably true. That might be true. But, um, you know, I think it's a lot of people like, oh, you know, hey, do you know about the drought with this and we're going to be in trouble? Oh, I don't care. Oh, yeah, let me tell you about the Johnny Depp. Like, oh, let me watch that. You know, like, what's going on with Taiwan today? No one's talking about, we're not even talking about Taiwan, you know. But okay, we're that was about the literally breaking news about 20 minutes ago. Right, but so, like, they would rather push all this stuff. Maybe. I'm just saying, you know, someone said, why is this so important? And I'm saying, well, but also these cases have always been this, um, this also, way, going back to the 90s say that this is important in a way because right now you have amber making all these claims about you know this domestic violence interpersonal violence whatever. this is the me too thing like but this but, is the anti me too thing finally like okay all men were guilty but not 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 now well i think it's kind of important to see that it like men can be affected by it too because even when like i mean there's a lot of cases a lot of people I've seen coming out, too, where it's like, you know, like if somebody wants to call in a welfare check. I, I saw this one lady the other day and I called it. If you want to call in a welfare check on a woman who's been like, you know, there's domestic violence there. The police are going to go out and check immediately. Well, this yeah. lady called in a welfare check on her friend who's a male who she knew was in this like dangerous relationship and hadn't heard from him for days. They took three days to get to him. And by then he was dead. So the girl killed him. The woman killed him. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, no, I mean, this is how it's weird because But it's like they take it more seriously because like, oh, it's a woman, so it's just like the whole believe all women thing. Yeah. It's it's like how about just believe all people? You know, like cuz this can happen to men too, and I think it's important and especially when somebody like it might not be important to us, but I'm sure it's important to Johnny Depp when you have somebody coming out and saying cuz he's like obviously everybody knows Johnny Depp. And now you've got somebody coming out and saying that, oh, he beats me. He does this. He does that. And honestly, based on all the other previous relationships, the people that have come out and been like, he's not like that. And like people he's worked on sets with, all these people that have been around him for years and years and years, all his team, everything like that. And they're like, this is just insane. Like, yeah, he's got a problem with drugs and alcohol, but he's never been violent. Like, yeah. he's never been abusive. He's never hit anybody. So, like, it's important to him to clear his name. Why don't you think she just doesn't act and like just like act, make a bunch of money, leave a guy? Why do this? Why would you do that? Um, Why wouldn't you because just? Because she sucks at acting. <laughs> I haven't seen her really in anything because I think Aquaman is for San Francisco people. But uh, I have to go pretty soon, and I know you want to. Yeah, talk Stranger to things, uh, things. Real quick, Stranger Things Friday. So. And there's a bunch of, I'm going to get to a bunch of stuff, everybody, but Leah does have to go, but I'll stay on live. So everybody, yes. Let me play a donation real quick, just to make sure it doesn't have to do with Leah. So she hears it. If it does, it might not have anything to do with her though. Okay, right. Mr. Popo, Malili Malabognabata, Mr. Joe and what? Mrs. Leah Cronin. I will buy you tickets and accommodation in Philippines. You guys deserve holiday. I'll book in a five-star resort where we hang black people like Angel Oh Adams my God. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> oh my god what Wait the hell well at that point if you booked me a free hotel in the philippines i would just assume we're going to be killed and raped so i wouldn't come anyway <laughs> so that was obviously the uh, filipino racist general santos 
who does not like people with darker skin than him. Um, so Filipino is a racist. Uh, now, MSNBC would try to spin that that I'm the racist somehow, but he actually is, believe it or not, a non-white racist person. Um, but, you know, we'll show, I'll play the MSNBC video coming up in a few minutes, but first we'll do Stranger Things. Uh, thanks for the dollar. Um, Leah's here, and she's not earned a, th a, a dime. You're fired, Leah. Um, go ahead. Stranger Things Friday, season four. How many trailers? Is there a trailer today, or what's going on? Right. So the final trailer for season four got released probably three hours ago. Oh, this morning. I haven't seen that then, so I'll go watch that later. Yeah, it's kind of they like the other ones have seemed to have been giving out more information, like you know, like clips and videos, whatever. Clips I'm really and, like, pumped up. Stuff like that. I'm ready to but go. This one actually like it's they, almost like some of the lines in the trailer almost seem like ominous, but I I kind of think that they're actually those lines when they're given out. I think they're playing D and D. Right, they could be read, saying anything, and they're putting them in the trailer as like, oh, crazy cryptic lines. Yeah, yeah. because there is a lot more D and D in this trailer that they released, like a lot more that they released today. Um, but mm. they gave out all of the. I mean, most people have probably heard by now, but they gave out the the volume episode numbers mm -hmm. and the time, the how long the episodes are going to be. That is crazy these are going to be movie episodes they are including the the last the last episode of this of the whole season mm -hmm. is actually two hours and 30 minutes <laughs> oh my god we're gonna be watching a movie but, every so, week so volume one has the first seven episodes which i don't know why everybody was assuming that it was going to be split five and four but everybody just like assumed that yeah but the first so the first season i mean the first volume Volume mm -hmm. 1, which comes out on Friday, is going to be seven episodes. Almost all the episodes, I think with the exception of one, are over 70 minutes long. Yeah. And the seventh episode is actually, I think, an hour and 25 minutes. Um, so then Volume 2 comes out on July 1st. And so that, that means Episode 8 is an hour and 35 minutes, I want to say. And then episode nine, which is the final, is two hours and thirty minutes. That is uh, uh that this is actually pretty cool because I know that I'm I've said pumped. I know I'm that, so excited. I know that I've said that like I don't like because I've been I was talking about this with someone else the other day because I said I don't like continuation stuff like where every week the next thing happens, but it's not true. It's it's you don't like it if it's bad. For instance, like when the story doesn't progress, like Picard. Uh, Star Trek Picard, the story doesn't progress. It's a 12-hour, 10-episode thing where it could have been three hours. There is no need for a 12-hour show. But with Game of Thrones, I liked it. It felt like I saw something every week. I got all this new stuff, and it, it, and it we got answers. But then we were left with some questions for the next week. Whereas with Picard... It felt like you were getting tidbits of nothing every episode. Garbage. So Star Trek Picard sucks. That's just a bad show anyway. S Star Trek Discovery sucks. Uh, Halo sucks. Um, so oh, Halo's really bad. And, and by the way, I like... I mean, you know, but it, again, that sucks because I love Halo even, and Star Trek. But even... With like with the Halo stuff that like what I've seen watch just sitting down with you because I watched the first episode with you and I think I've seen tidbits of like other ones with you. I hold video game shows and movies to a different standard than regular ones because they're video game stuff. Like you know. Yeah. Like and I would. It's you, would still you, like you would horrible. Accept, you accept. I accept campiness almost in the video game stuff. Like if there's a little bit of. You know, if there's not the best story, but it's fun like the video game, I actually like that better. Whereas with Halo, they're trying to go the other way, which is every once in a while, it feels they give you the video game campiness for a second, but then they go back into this deep, crazy story that sucks and progresses slowly. Halo is just like Picard. Also, it, the dude that's like Master Chief is just not a Master Chief to me. No, he looks like a goof. He does not fit. What would you? It's like when you think of like... What would Master Chief look like? Not that. Mm -hmm. I agree. When he took his mask off, I went, "What?" Yeah, like, I mean, I'm not just... a woman. I'm I'm not a female. You know, obviously, I, I'm only bisexual sometimes. Um, but to me, like as a guy, like that's not the guy I picture in the suit. 
And, right. and if you're a woman watching the show, I think the guy's a weird looking dude. Maybe some women he think he's good looking. I don't know. But I like I picture Kurt Russell in the suit, like a, a younger Kurt Russell or something like that. Yeah, that would have been better. Like for sure. Something like that. Uh, and, and, and you know what's funny about that is. You know, and I know, and this is the, by the way, this is the dis, the thing with men and women. Like back in the day, they, they wanted seven of nine to be all sexy and boobs in the Voyager thing. And that was a problem. Now, now that's a problem that we did that or whatever. But, and so, so you shouldn't do the same thing with men where you have to have the guy, whatever the guy, it's just, he looks weird. It's not who anyone expected in the suit. I don't care what you say. Well, no, I mean, it's Master Chief. I think Master Chief, it should be good looking. Like, you know, like, what if he was and stuff like that? He's a freaking <laughs> Spartan warrior. Uh, he, you know, he should be in shape. Well, the, the guy is in shape. He takes his shirt. He takes his clothes yeah, off. No, it's He's in shape. Face, his face is. I just don't know. It's like, it's like when you look at you, like you have like sort of like, um, like you can picture somebody in your head. Uh huh. And then, like, they fit that character for you. Or, like, you ever have somebody that's, like, I don't know, like, you read a book. If anybody that's read a book and then you have, like, the casting done for, like, a movie or a show and you're, yeah. like, it just doesn't fit for you. Yeah. Well, you're, you're a misog... You know, you're a... What do you call it? A sex crazed, you know, Leah. You know, he's not good enough looking for you. So, you're you're the problem, too. <laughs> it's not... It's just he doesn't... It doesn't... His face doesn't... It doesn't work for me. He doesn't, he doesn't work look for me. Like, <laughs> it doesn't look like a master chief. You're like Rick, like just Rick, doesn't. You're Rick Berman. I feel from like he's gonna be like more like he should be more like <laughs> ruggedy and stuff. Like almost like I don't even know how to say it. Yeah. I look more. I think I look more like Master Chief than this guy. Like I don't know. But uh, no, it's I don't know. I'm used to. It. He's good. He's all right, and he's kind of like a little bit likable, a little bit. But he looks more like a Vulcan, is what you know. Like we're looking for William Shatner should have been Master Chief, not Spock. You know, this guy it's, looks like Spock or something. I don't know. You we're, got any more Stranger Things? Yeah, stuff? we really got. To... So I sort of so we sidelined the shit out of ourselves here. Um, who's the original voice of Master Chief? Real quickly. Okay, so even the the guy who voices Master Chief. He looks like Master Chief. Now, maybe that's because I know what he looks like. No, I think I know who you're talking about. But he looks like an in, like he doesn't look right either. But I mean, he's the guy who voices Master Chief. Like he looks, he looks more like Master Chief. He looks like an Andorian from Star Trek or something. But I mean, whatever. You get the idea. It's the whole show doesn't seem right. I don't. And by the way, if the show was good and he looked like this, that's different. But it's also that he takes the mask off in the first right away in the first episode. Anyway, the point is, Stranger Things is good, and I can watch it week to week. And what's crazy is, we're about to get what over an hour every episode. That was the other thing. Picard and, and, and Halo are like forty six minutes, so you're like infuriated at the end of it. You're like, I learned almost nothing, and I hate myself. Nobody should watch Picard. But like, nobody, just don't do it to yourself. And even though Strange New Worlds has problems, like with some of the stuff they're doing, like major little issues, that, but you just overlook it because you're entertained. So it's like okay, but str so my Strange New World. How long is Stranger Things first episode on Friday night? And whoa, oh shit, no, it's on Friday night. That sucks. I'll be doing my show. What time? Wait a minute, is it every Friday? It's Netflix. It all comes out on the same day. Oh, that's right. It's a binge thing. We can binge it. Uh huh. Which is oh, why I'm no. like, I'm actually glad they split it into the two, the two volumes. Because uh -huh. I literally would have sat there and done the whole thing. Now I'm forced to wait at least, you know, a couple of months. I get well, a you better extra. wait for me. You're going to wait for me. No, right? I'm not going to be able to. You're going to have to make time. What? What are you I'm talking about? I'm not going to be able to. You're going to have to make time. What do you mean make time? I don't know, but I'm not going to be able to not watch it. No, but I mean, you've got to watch it with me, right? We watched all the other seasons together. And I'm the <sighs> and, I, and by the way, I'm the one who was like, you got to watch this. No, you weren't. I swear to God. You, Maybe no, the you both said of us. that, but I, I was the one that was like, I'm going to watch it. See, I thought the first season, I didn't watch it for a long time. Yeah, because I thought, you thought, I thought the, the boy first season, was going to die. I didn't die. know there was like this supernatural element to it. No, you thought I it was. Thought, I thought it was about some kid going missing. Right. And so that was it. I said to you, I remember because I said to you, I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch Stranger Things, but I'm concerned or whatever. And then you said, I won't watch it because I don't, I know what's going to happen or whatever. And then I said, eh, and then we. Yeah, sadness. And then That's we, what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. But then we both watched it, and I had already seen. I had, I already saw it because 
I think I watched some of it first because I was like, oh, I thought we thought the we thought it was going to be a sad, horrible, like Mystic River, like ending or mm-hmm. whatever. Ugh. And we ended up watching it, but we watched it together. So we both watched it together. So when does it come out exactly? Friday. What time? I don't know. I'm assuming midnight something. I don't know. If it's a midnight. It's been a long long time since something came out on Netflix that I was like sitting there like waiting for. I don't know. I'm assuming it comes out. If it comes out at midnight, then that's bullshit. That sucks. We're screwed if that's the case. But if it's at like in the daytime, then we can watch it when the day before I go to work. Doesn't but, say. Or does it I come out thir- well? Or, oh, it, or, or, or is it Thursday night at midnight? That's what I'm saying. Now, if it's Thursday well, night, yeah. At midnight, if it's gonna come out on Friday, yeah, it's gonna be Thursday at midnight. Or not three a.m. though midnight. Or it could be three a.m. Oh, I don't if it's know. Three a.m. We're fucking screwed. But never mind. It is three a.m. It's Eastern time. Oh, fuck. Well. Yeah, that, but that works because then we All can... All right, w- so I'm going to go to bed, get up, take the kids to school, come home, and literally just watch as many episodes that's, as I can. That's the same time Strange New Worlds comes out, so that's perfect. So like, Don't give a shit about Strange New Worlds. Watching Stranger Things. Okay, well, we'll what, can we watch it in the theater room? Wait a minute. No, you're wrong. Strange New Worlds comes out on Thursdays. Yeah, but, but that's... so. Oh, yeah, so it comes out Wednesday night. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so it is the day before. So we can watch that, then we can watch that. Okay, but we got to figure it out. Friday. Yeah. Friday, Friday, Thursday night, Friday during morning. During the day, where it's Stranger Things. Thursday during the day mm-hmm. is Strange New Worlds. Okay, it's too many strange in the title. You have to go. You have to go, don't you? I do. Or you just leave the kids. Just they'll, they'll figure it out. This no, because then they call me, and I still have to go down there and get them. I know. <laughs> and then the school's just ooh. All right. You well, know, and be like, why didn't you come get your kids? Because <laughs> we're doing it, we're on YouTube right now. Mr. Pico Boulevard, thanks for becoming a member, dude. Again, well, how many months is this? Do you get Leah's picture? Oh, he's using your icon. That's creepy. You... Um, you made it. What's well, your face? Yeah, but did you expect people not to use it if you made it? No, I was just trying to be weird by calling it creepy that he used your face that you agreed to use. I think it's creepy that you made it. Why not? People un- after five months unlock your face. That's a great. Who doesn't want that? I don't know. Me? <laughs> yeah, I asked you. You said, okay. Yeah, no, I don't really care. Either way, I guess. All right. Well, go pick up the kids and um, enjoy that. What comment is... I'm not saying she's not fuckable. I'm saying she's a shitty actor- actress. What? Amber like, Heard? Why the F not? I still do Amber Heard in bad <laughs> <laughs> what is this in the Sun chat lock. my chat yeah not, in the chat my chat's broken it's not working i don't somebody said that no i'm i mean i'm not saying that she's ugly or something what i'm saying is she's a shitty actress well she's obviously not ugly because like elon musk and johnny depp wanted to hook up with her and everybody in aquaman i remember jb wanted to bang the hell out of her don't forget james franco james franco with the the male version of her Oh, no, there's a whole thing with them being in, like, the elevator, like, cuddling and stuff like that, and she had him over the house. Oh. It was brought up in the trial as part of the whole, because she would be like, Johnny's jealous of me, blah, 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 and controlling and jealous, and blah, and it's like, well, look what you were doing. Isn't James Franco also, like, canceled for being a psycho or something? Like, he did yeah, something? He's a weirdo, too, because Seth Rogen hates him now, but then again, Seth Rogen's an SJW, so it's hard to tell what's real and not. I don't know. Anyway, I think... All right, I gotta go, Bye. Bye. Uh, Joe Biden's gone more than 100 days without a mainstream media interview. (laughs) Good idea, Joe. Um, Thanks to Leah for coming on. Uh, Let me just go ahead and drop Discord, since the more you can drop Discord, the better the stream will get. Um, Shitty actress. Uh, What's up, everybody? I'm now flying solo, and we can watch the uh, disinformation stuff in a few. Assuming people are getting this live alert. I don't know if people just aren't getting it. They're here. I want to sort of the Dave Chappelle attacker uh, says he did it for the LGBTQ. The uh, jokes that Dave Chappelle made enraged him, and that's why he attacked the stage, apparently. Um, But he's also guilty or apparently allegedly guilty of months before stabbing his roommate. So he stabbed his roommate, allegedly, months before, and then he charged on stage uh, to stab uh, Dave Chappelle. Or to attack him in some way. But now he's kind of getting off because, 
he's crazy or something. So that allows you to whatever. You know, uh, I wonder if maybe he thinks he can jump on stage and attack a comedian because he can attack real people in regular life. So, of course, you can run on stage and attack a comedian for words when you can literally attack your roommate and get away with it. So if you can attack your friends or your people that you live with in real life and get away with it, hey, I guess I can attack a comedian on stage, too, because, you know, that when you're delusional, the delusion continues when you get away with everything. Why they don't understand this and lock people up or actually punish people uh, or put them away somewhere. We'll never know. But um, that's why the Dave Chappelle attacker apparently attacked Dave Chappelle. Washington Commander's NFL team has purchased Northern Virginia for new stadium build, blah, blah, blah. D. Welsh, I mean, I don't, does anyone really care about that? <laughs> like, I mean, like, like, what? I can't even imagine... You know, I mean, put some fucking, put some dynamite in that stadium. You know, the DA needs to get sued. Well, the DA isn't real in California. You know what I mean? In California, people just aren't real. In California, it's like people are shitting in the streets. That's normal. In California, people are homeless. That's normal. In California, they have gun violence left and right, but have the but have some of the strictest gun control. That's normal. In California, you can stab your, you can jump on stage and attempt to attack and assault or kill a comedian. That's normal, you know. In California, you can give AIDS to someone and not tell them you have AIDS. That's normal. In California, everything causes cancer. But we're not actually going to do anything about it. We're just going to put the warning on everything. So then it trivializes that. What the fuck is wrong with California, bro? The state is in disarray. Because these people are nuts in the state. A crazy state has created crazy people, and people wonder why. Narcissistic weirdos who will take you to court over bizarre shit that doesn't make any sense. You know? Imagine if a white guy charged the stage. Imagine if a white male charged the stage and attacked Dave Chappelle. They would have said it was some kind of racism. Um, especially if he was... Like, or they would have said he was like a Trump supporter or something like that. Um, just they, they tried to call this guy a Trump supporter. They, they're saying this guy is radicalized by Trump. Like what? His gun identified as a knife. Dave one mongoloid zero. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Pico Boulevard. Yes. Well, we knew it was a knife all along because it was a gun, a fake gun with a knife in it. We've known that since the second it happened. Um. I would say, yeah, it's going to be something about the warm climates, Jfinity. Florida and California are out of their minds, uh, but they're the opposite of each other in in that sense, but yet crazy. I would, I've been to Florida. I mean, believe it or not, Florida is wild, but I've been to Florida and it was pretty, it was all right when I was there, but, you know, I don't know. I've always, uh, I've been to Florida about f four or five times and every time it's been fine, but definitely hard to believe that the place I went to Florida five different times is the same Florida we hear about all the time with the insanity that happens out there. Um, but I can only imagine going to California at this point. I used to want to move to California. Now I would never go there at all. I would never go there whatsoever. Um, MSNBC disinformation. I mean, you know, I mean, that's just goes with the fucking name of the, the group. Um, but nobody sums it up better than Jimmy Dore. That out loud. It's Let's listen to, to Jimmy Dore. So here's the video that they put together. Matt Orfila put together this teaser. And here, I'll play it for you now. You don't have a president talking about exterminating Latinos. 100% pants on fire. The Havana syndrome. Headaches and a loud noise. Clearly acts of aggression, acts of war. Scientists say the sounds were crickets. The Havana syndrome. Our enemies might be weaponizing technology, beaming something to hurt people's brains. The claims are scientifically implausible. <laughs> Donald Trump to now investigate a conspiracy theory about COVID coming from a lab in Wuhan. This theory needs to be investigated, which is what President Biden is doing. Hunter Biden's laptop reveals emails. We shouldn't look at it as anything other than a Russian disinformation operation. The Hunter Biden laptop material is genuine. The murder of a police officer. Officer Brian Sicknick was killed in the line of duty. They beat a Capitol Police officer to death. Officer Sicknick died of 
natural causes. <laughs> the steel dossier. It may be dirty, but it ain't fake. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the steel dossier is discredited by far, actually. I mean, this is the lunatic response to what is a very rational, evidence-based, fact-based investigation. FBI pleads guilty to doctoring email. What the report shows is something that won't be surprising to people that have spent a lot of time in the federal government. The report left former officials aghast. The FBI... Oh, wait, this is, this is the lady who lied for George Bush in the illegal war back in the day. But how could she be working for the liberal left when she used to lie for the right-wing conservatives about 9-11, Iraq, and the war, and gas, and about uh, Halliburton and um, Dick Cheney? How could someone who used to lie for Dick Cheney and George Bush now be a far-left person who lies for them? Could it be just they're a bad person? ...is exonerated today. It doesn't vindicate anyone at the FBI who touched this. They are all absolved of any wrongdoing. The activities we found here don't vindicate anybody. The Trump administration cleared peaceful Black Lives Matter protesters so the president could take a photo in front of a church. We did not find evidence that federal agents used CS gas. The D.C. police used the CS gas. Protesters were gassed to clear the way for Trump's photo op. Demonstrators were pushed out to allow contractors to build a fence. A to damage. That one I actually still have a problem with, but the the way that they portrayed it in the media was a lie, no doubt about it. But I do have a problem still with what he did there. It's done during the two previous nights of rioting. Russians offered a bounty for the killing of U.S. soldiers. U.S. intel walks back <laughs> claim Russians put bounties on American troops. This mountain of evidence that we mountain. now have of bounties that Russia paid. The Biden White House acknowledged there was little evidence. January 6th committee's investigation into a seven-hour, 37-minute gap. Possible cover-up in the records of calls, and it is no coincidence. The call logs are complete with no missing pages. The gap is explained by use of White House landlines and cell phones. These are the facts. Let that sink in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I always enjoy that. Uh, Jimmy Dore is probably one of the only... Um, now, Jimmy Dore is the guy who spit in Alex Jones's face not that long ago when he was jerking off Chank uh, from the Young Jerks uh, a while back. So, you know, but Jimmy Dore is one of the better people at, at you know, highlighting and exposing a lot of this stuff and you know, conjugating this evidence and stuff like that. So I enjoy him. Um, but yeah, he will, uh, he is a flip flopper, uh, f through the years, but really it's, it's the parties that change. And so that's why you, you end up flip flopping, uh, to either side literally worked for Bush. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly our points. Uh, Jay Finity. Um, that's my point. Exactly. This woman uh, once worked for George Bush, and now she's all of a sudden... Aquaman caught Amber Heard dropping deuces in ocean. Oh! Um, it doesn't make him wrong, Jay Finity. Uh, the thing that I just played you does not make Jimmy Dore wrong. So, you know, you can not like him all you want, but the bottom line is he's right there, and he's been right about a lot of things recently. So, you know, I think he is a bit of a grifter, though. Um, but, you know, whatever. If... Find stuff that he says that's wrong, and then we can talk about it. Go ahead, find stuff that Jimmy Dore says that are wrong. You know, then you can talk about them. I'm interested in what's right and wrong. I don't care if someone switched there, or whatever. Um, however, she was wrong about George Bush and J Dick Cheney when she was a Republican, and now she's wrong about everything today as she worked for MSNBC. So that's who I'm worried about. Now, when Jimmy Dore was more left wing, he was right with most of the things he talked about when he was mostly left wing. Now he's right when he's an independent left wing. So that's how I feel. Jimmy Dore was pretty much right about a lot of the things he did and said back in the day when he was more left. Now, now that he's more independent left, he's right as well. So my, my opinion, he's still the same guy. It's just the parties have switched everywhere. Um, the only thing that you could say about Jimmy that he doesn't do well enough is is uh, calling out more of the right side hypocrisy. But he does call it out because he still disagrees with it. So it's weird that people get so mad at a guy like Jimmy Dore. You get so mad at Jimmy Dore for exposing how that party has problems and how people lie. But you, nobody gets mad at the scumbag people who are actually doing the things. That's the funny thing. It's so weird. It's, it's almost like people are territorial or, um, what do you call it, um, 
Um, it's almost like people are territorial and uh, tribalists. It's almost like people are tribalists, you know? Um, but that being said, find something he says that's wrong, and then we can talk about that. But I will say Jimmy is the same guy that spit in Alex Jones's face a long time ago, and that was very wrong what he did. He assaulted Alex Jones. So, um, you know, I like to... I think uh, JB brought that up a long time ago, and it was very interesting to me. I was like, "Wow!" Hmm. So that tells you, like, you know, Jimmy Dore is is got his angle, and he's looking for, you know, he's yeah, he's making money. But everybody does. Everybody has their angle. So as long as you, know, you find some things that are wrong with what he says, then we can talk about that. But what does he say? You know, doesn't make any sense. Everybody's a grifter. You know what I mean? J Jay Finity, honestly, Jay Finity. Like, you're being ridiculous. Everybody, like, these people have not changed what they're saying. You're calling people a grifter. But they haven't changed what they're saying. Do you know what I mean? Like, what what are you saying? You're calling everyone a grifter who's normal? So I'm a grifter then. I'm a grifter. So if you're not a left, a left-sided left person or a right-sided person, like, you're just a grifter, I guess. Okay. So you're just a grifter. So Tulsi Gabbard is a grifter? What has Tulsi Gabbard done? Tell me what Tulsi Gabbard has said that makes her wrong. How is Tulsi Gabbard a grifter? Pete Buttigieg lied about her and lies about several things. He's in politics. She's not, but she's a grifter. How is she different? What are what are her what is her policy that's changed that makes her different? Please explain that to me. How is Tulsi Gabbard a, a grifter? I mean, I'm telling you, bro. Like, I mean, like, tell tell me how Telsey Gabbard is a grifter. She was literally fucking like taken not seriously at all by anybody, and she was called a Russian agent. So, so she's a Russian agent, right? Is she not pro weed anymore? I don't get it. Pete Boot Buttigieg. I'm trying to figure it out. Maybe she is. I mean, we'll see, but she's not in politics right now. I mean, she's... I'm trying to figure it out. I mean, yeah, I'll have to look it up. I'll look it up, and if she changed, then we'll talk about it. Um... I'm pro weed. I mean, everybody's pro weed. I think. I don't think. I don't know who's against weed nowadays. Like, I. I don't know. I don't know who's against weed. But my point is that Bernie Sanders, to me, and Tulsi Gabbard were good people. Bernie Sanders was screwed over, and nobody cares. Tulsi Gabbard was screwed over. Nobody cares. The reason why Bernie Sanders was never um, destroyed like Tulsi Gabbard is because Bernie Sanders played ball and said, oh, I endorse you. I love you. Bernie Sanders kisses ass so he can buy another car and buy another mansion. And to me, Tulsi didn't do that. So Tulsi is buried and doesn't have the lineage that, that Bernie Sanders has. You know, doesn't have the years in the system that Bernie Sanders has. But both both were destroyed. Bernie was too far, you know, um, socialist. And that's way too outside. They don't want so you know, Biden and Bush and those people don't want socialism. You know, they want they want sort of a manipulated communism, but they don't want socialism. Um, they want to say that they do or try to pretend that they have that they do. That way you'll vote for them, but then when they get in office, they're gonna spin on that right away. You know what I mean? They just fucking spin on all this shit. They they flip flop to the other to the other side. Bernie endorsed Biden, yeah. I don't know if Tulsi did, but I remember Bernie endorsed him. But Bernie should have Bernie should have been the president. But he got screwed by the DNC and uh everybody knows that. But nobody cares. Nobody cares that uh, that that Hillary screwed uh Joe Biden. Do you guys want to talk about wrestling? Do you want to get into Sasha Banks? Yeah, Tulsi, Tulsi endorsed uh, Biden as well. 
probably because um, I would assume she endorsed him over Trump. So then you should like Tulsi, right? Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe she endorsed him hoping she'd be the vice president. Do you think she would have done that? Because I'm trying to think, why would she endorse him? You know, did she endorse him because she, I mean, I guess you have to endorse somebody, right? And you don't want to endorse, maybe didn't want to endorse Trump. So you think she endorsed him more than because she wanted to become vice president or because like it would be suicide for her party if she said didn't endorse him which one which one do you think it is i don't know i wonder it's got to be one of those two right it's the right it's the thing to do for your party or it's she, oh maybe he'll pick me but she wasn't black so she was never going to win be a vice president so i don't know which one she would go with oh she's been out of the she's never been in the cool club Jfinity. That's why I like Tulsi. She's never been in the cool club at all. No one, people have never liked her. They've tried to smear her, smear her about everything. How could you possibly like any of those people who try to lie and smear somebody when they're all liars, really? But like, when you try to smear people, I go, oh, that's weird. Why are they trying to smear her so bad? Why are they trying to smear Bernie? And they they smear Bernie, Tulsi. And Trump, Bernie, Tulsi, and Trump, no one has been more smeared than those three people. Bernie, Tulsi, and Trump smeared to death. Why? Trump is from the outside coming in. Bernie has so many socialistic tendencies, and he could win. He could have won. And Tulsi is a free thinker who's not part of the group as well. Everybody else plays ball pretty much and is part of the group, in my opinion. Why are those three so smeared? Bernie, Trump, Tulsi. Why are they why are they smeared the most? However, Bernie endorsed people who, who lied and did illegal stuff to screw him over. Tulsi left the whole thing. Tulsi just left. So we have nobody left. Trump screwed himself over by the January 6th stuff. So Trump screwed himself by doing the January 6th stuff, by allowing himself to be associated with that. So Trump is damaged. Bernie is damaged because Bernie could never win now. I don't think. And Tulsi is completely out of the whole thing. So we have no, we have nobody left. You have nobody left who can, who's honest, that could run somewhat honest who who's left name a candidate i would love you to name a candidate you can't name one at this point but anyway let's move on from the the politics stuff we talked a lot about amber hood and johnny depp earlier my wife was here leah was on the show for the last 38 minutes 45 minutes whatever it was um this show is not going well today. I don't know if it's not, maybe my stream didn't go out to people or it's the wrong time or the wrong topic or whatever. I don't know, but I'm probably going to get off the air in a few minutes and uh, try to put together my uh, Patreon podcast that's going up on Patreon in a little bit. So if you guys want to hear that, I have questions on Patreon that I'm going to answer as well. I see your questions on Patreon. There's quite a few. Uh, that I'm going to get to. And of course, Dave Chappelle, once again, his attacker stabbed his roommate months before attacking Dave Chappelle. So first I stab my roommate, then I attack a celebrity on stage. What's next? Shooting up a school? Shooting up a laundromat? What's next for the guy that stabbed, that stabbed his roommate and attempted to attack Dave Chappelle on a stage? Well, Nothing, because he's not fit to stand trial, and he'll just have some, who knows what's happened. Release him back into the wild of the universe. But it's California, so at least if the guy does something terrible, it will be to California people, who eventually, maybe, someday will get sick of this stupidity in California, and they'll actually put someone in jail, or actually bring back the death penalty, or actually figure out what mental illness is causing this stuff. Eventually, people in California may get sick, of all these people just fucking running amok in their fucking um, state. 
and they'll stop just treating everybody like, oh, the poor mental patient, we, you know, it's going to be okay. But yet when someone shoots up a, like when someone shoots up a movie theater or those things, they call them supremacist or something. When someone runs over people at a parade, they cover that up. When people shoot up things, they cover it up if it's the wrong thing, if it's uh, whatever. It's mentally ill people everywhere. They're running wild in this country. And they're going to continue to run wild in this country because here's the thing. It's like in Diablo, the video game. The more items, the more runs, the more chance you have to find that rare item. If you have a million people in the country and you have 10 mentally ill people, and you have 50 million people in the country, you know what I mean? Just do the math. The more people every year we gain more people than ever before in the country. So every year we have more mentally ill. It's not that people are becoming necessarily becoming more mentally ill. It's that the numbers, it's all about the math, guys and girls and women and crazy people out there. It's all about the math, no matter what. If you add more people, you get more mentally ill people. So it's going to seem like the, the country is going crazier than ever because it is. Every single year, it's crazier than ever because more mentally ill people are going to be out there because it's just the numbers. Do the numbers. But we don't address the situation. We have no way to address the situation. You have more mentally ill than ever, and you are going to keep having more mentally ill than ever because the numbers add up. If every 10,000 people, there's one mentally ill person, you're going to have more mentally ill people because the number of people keeps going up everywhere. So that's just never, that's how it's going to go. It's not a problem, That's but it but it could be. So we'll see what happens. But um, it I do think that also we are going a little unchecked with some of people are going a little crazier than ever, but uh, unstable homes, unstable families, we don't have enough money. Minimum wage is too low. Uh, inflation is insane now. We got the whole COVID stuff. Now monkeypox, they're going to flip out on that. They're just trying to make you crazier. So the mentally ill, it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing until until finally basically what will happen is like there'll be wars everywhere. Like groups will form and terroristic wars will happen and they'll, you know, well, eventually people will get sick of dying and blowing each other up maybe. Or we'll have a big nuclear thing or something will happen that will exterminate the population down back down to where it is or lower. You know, there'll be 2 billion people living on planet Earth instead of 8 billion people. And we'll have solved the problem of global warming. We'll have taken out ourselves with billions of people gone over time. Over time, some mentally ill people will get a hold of the entire political party and uh, you'll have another uh, you'll have another Hitler. That's what will happen. And we'll, we'll get rid of like 30% of the planet, you know, um, probably what's going to happen because look at, look at right now, look at Joe, look at Joe Biden, look at how, how Trump became president from outside of the political system. Look at how Joe Biden is president right now. You know what I mean? This is not, this is not, this is trending down. We're trending down. Eventually it's going to break down. We're laundering money to other countries. I mean, like, dude, it's <laughs> it's going to be funny. Um, we'll see. And then eventually what will happen is uh, there'll be a correction, right? Like everything will be good again, will be better because things will get so bad that people will get tired of it and they'll try to build it back. You know what I mean? Like like Joe Biden's trying to build back better. He's actually just destroying the whole fucking country, but or helping to destroy it like everybody's been helping to destroy it since probably 2000. I would say since the year 2000, we've really been trying to destroy this country. I don't know why, but um but really since the beginning you could say, but I don't know. It's a, it's a pattern, you know, eventually we'll come out of this and they'll have to try to build it up the right way again. So there'll be that correction of first we were locking mentally ill people up who weren't mentally ill in the 50s. But now we don't lock anybody up um, who are mentally ill. So it makes no goddamn sense. The overcorrection, undercorrection, overcorrection, it just back and forth over and over again. Um, that's what keeps happening.
You know, everyone always, th but you know what though, guardian of chaos, everybody always thinks they're living in the end times. You know what I mean? They thought the end times were here in the 1920s. They thought the end times were here in the, in the fifties when they had nuclear bomb shelters. We thought we were going to be at nuclear war. Um, you know, we thought maybe the end of times would come in the eighties with the cold war. We thought the end of the world was coming and nine 11 happened. You know, maybe that's something's crazy is going on. We thought maybe the world was ending in the year 2000 because of Y2K, you know, they thought the world was ending in the eight. You know, it's just, it goes back. It's always been this. We've always, we're always the same. Like there's always the group of people who think this, the group of people who think that, the group of people who think this. There's always the radical children, the kids who are like, the kids who are like, you know, young kids who are 10 years old to, you know, 21 years old who are become hippies because it's cool to become hippies and fight the system because the Vietnam War and all these other things and we're anti-parents and we're doing drugs and the parents don't like that. So we're all doing drugs and we're hippies. Then in the 80s, we're all getting tattoos and piercings. Uh, F you, mom and dad. Then in the late 90s, we're all heavy metal and goth and piercings and tattoos and 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 drugs and LSD and coke and ecstasy was back and Kalanapins and oh... And then in the not, and then in the 2000s, at some point, people realized, fuck, my mom and dad have piercings. My mom and dad have colored hair. My mom and dad do these things. How can I stand out from mom and dad? I know I'll become a pronoun. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like that's what it is, bro. These kids have nothing else to fall on. Uh, what what can I do? I'll play. I'll do this crazy thing. Oh, my parents have that. My parents like. How can I get away from my parents? Oh well, my parents are like straight. They don't understand. My parents understand being gay now. That doesn't work for me. My parents understand being straight now. That doesn't work for me. I know what I can do. I can hack off my body parts and I can call myself a nerf. A nerf. I'm a nerf. I'm a purr. I'm a they them there. You know, like that's all that's left. What's after that, right? Because you've already, we've already done everything else against our parents. How can you, how can you rebel against your parents at the age of 16 and 15 now? Oh, my parents don't seem to like this TikTok trend of people being they, them, theirs. Oh, I figured it out. My parents don't care if I'm gay or lesbian. My parents don't care if I date a black guy, or white guy, Asian person. They don't care about that. My parents don't care if I listen to death metal, Billie Eilish. My parents don't care if I have uh, seven piercings in my face and tattoos. What the fuck can I do to be different? That's part of it. Not that there aren't real people that are like that. There are certainly lots of real people that are part of that and like that, and that's fine. But there's a lot of people following the trends, man. I'll tell you that. What do you think about Sasha Banks? What do you guys think about Sasha Banks? They say it's going to be the end of the WWE. I disagree with that. We've got a list here that's a phenomenal list that Mr. Pico sent to me. So the end of Sa the Sasha Banks has ended the WWE. Like, this is it. WWE is over. But Mr. Pico sent me a tweet by this guy, Crater. I don't know who sent this out, but things that WWE can survive and has survived, right? Jimmy Snuka and the death of Nancy Argentino. Losing Hulk Hogan to WCW. The 1994 steroid trial. The New Generation era. The Montreal Screwdrub. Uh, Nitro beating Raw in the ratings for 83 consecutive weeks. Owen Hart's death over the edge, 99, where he went over the edge. Um, the World Wildlife Fund, the name change dispute in 2002. The plan, the plane ride from hell, losing Steve Austin, The Rock, and Brock Lesnar. The death of Eddie Guerrero, the death of uh, Benoit, and the double murder-suicide. Losing Shawn Michaels and Batista Edge in 2010 and 11. Brock Lesnar breaking the Undertaker street. John Cena becoming a part-timer. Hulk Hogan's racist remarks. The Saudi Arabia partnership. The COVID-19 pandemic. And so many more that aren't on that list. The WWE has somehow survived all of it. Um, despite ratings and house show attendance being a little bit down, making the most money ever, but things that WWE can't survive according to the internet today, Naomi and Sasha Banks walking out of the company. <laughs> um, they got rid of Bray Wyatt, one of the most successful merch sellers in the company. The mask, the Bray Wyatt character, he's gone. 
But oh no, the WWE will never survive Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out. Oh no, they'll never get over it. It's over. They finally done now. Hilarious. So that is uh, a funny tweet that I happened to see earlier. And uh, that's about it, man. I guess uh, I thought, you know, it was weird. What a weird day. Anyway, if you're watching this video on demand, Leah, or uh, on repeat or later and it's not live, feel free to leave a super thanks down below if you guys want to support these videos uh, like this and want me to go live more often every day or want me to put more videos out like this. I don't know if the alert didn't go out or whatever today, but uh, certainly the numbers are rough. I will say that. I don't know what's up with that. Could be the title. Could be the non-wrestling content. We did a lot of non-wrestling here. Anything goes. These are the topics that people really wanted me to talk about, it seemed, but uh, maybe they don't. Maybe I, So I probably will stick more to wrestling in the next episodes. But um, there you have it, the big update on Dave Chappelle and the guy who stabs his roommate. Uh, the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp sort of stuff today that Leah you know, went into. I didn't know when this trial was going to end. I'm sick of hearing about it. I honestly wish that they would try to kill each other in the courtroom live on the air. That'd be kind of funny. Uh, Amber Heard attacks him with a pencil and tries to stab Johnny Depp. That would be more interesting than anything to me. Um, but we'll see what happens uh, when when it happens. Uh, also, uh, like I said, Sasha Banks stuff, not as important as people think. The WWE is a mess. And we also went over the MSNBC funny little video there that Jimmy Dore had. Uh, Stranger Things Season 4, excited for that. These are going to be like movies when they're released. Every episode's going to be like a movie. I'm kind of bummed, though, because it's going to be hard to watch all of it, you know, with um, my wife, you know, and then go to work and then do all this stuff and uh, whatever. We'll see what happens. What up? Weed God. How you doing, brother? Colonel Stutters, thank you. Have a good day. Hit the like button on your way out, I guess. I'll see you tonight live for the Monday Night Raw review, maybe. I may I may actually I don't know. I may I may uh I may skip going live for the first time in a long time for Raw tonight. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do Raw tonight. Kind of not feeling like it. You know, fuck it. You know? I don't know. Maybe I'll go live for a little bit. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I'll see you tonight. Maybe. Maybe.